And we're back to turning things into demons, the one series on this channel, besides Multiverse Tales, that has somehow managed to stay completely without any direct pop culture affiliation. We've done phobias as demons, and dinosaurs as demons, and now, as voted on by all of you, elements as demons. Though, to be fair, this is basically just another Phobias as Demons episode, but focusing on fears of specific elements. So, let's get into what's essentially Phobias as Demons, part 5. Let's do it. Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Throughout human history, many have lost their lives to the elements. Fire, cold, storms, rock slides, these all still take lives to this day. Though as humanity has advanced, we've developed more and more ways to protect ourselves from such things. Even still, there are many who have overwhelming fears of the various elements, and little do most know that those very fears may be drawing unto them a demon. Fear of the wind is a rare occurrence, but does indeed happen, and while there are many demons that would be well fit to terrorize those with such a fear, one specifically seeks these people out. Onamind. This demon is a four-winged beast that can spit violent winds and even small tornadoes from the holes in its stomach. It bears a human head with an extra eye and constantly totes a wide, eerie grin. This creature rests in massive storm clouds, floating dormant, until the winds take it close enough to someone with the fear it seeks. When the scent is caught, it descends for its feast. For days prior to its full introduction to its victim, Onamind will batter their home with strong winds, rattling their doors and windows through the night as they lose more and more sleep, becoming ever more susceptible to strong bouts of terror they'll likely start to suspect something strange is happening as they speak to others in their community and hear that no one else is experiencing such winds in their area. As growing confusion accompanies fear, Onamind will eventually reveal itself to its prey. It will send a small twister to their home, just as they're stepping outside, and this guided wind will scoop up the terrified soul off the ground and carry them up and up into the air, till they're left being whipped around in a dark cloud, being pelted by rain, their ears being rocked with the thunderous winds swirling all around them. Onamind will circle them, at first staying far enough away to not be fully seen through the haze, but drawing ever nearer each minute. All the while, its face will be directed towards them, bending and contorting in every which way, ecstatic from the horrified scent its prey is giving off. It will control the winds around them to batter its prey, sending them hurling and spiraling through the air, falling from the sky only to be scooped up again. After however many hours of this, the victim will likely eventually pass out, but their horror won't end there. Onamind will have its wind place them down in a vast open field, and when they awaken, will begin with only a light breeze around them. As they try to run and find their way to any kind of help, the cruel beast will soon have its strong winds kick up again, and soon, once more, the terrified prey will be up in the clouds, being rocked by ever more of the winds they so fear. It's kind of funny, it's actually super windy outside at the time I'm recording this, so I'm hoping that sound isn't really coming through. But anyway, for this design, I actually thought initially when I first finished this piece that it was the worst one from the episode, but the next day, in fact this morning, I ended up going back to it and adding a bunch of details. I did record it, so you'll see it at the end. And I think the added bits of just texture and little like weird patterns I put on it really helped flesh this one out and make it one of the best drawings of the episode. Though definitely not the best one, that's, that's the next one. I really love the next one. But anyway, for the design, I was actually taking inspiration from something a few people have suggested over the course of this series, that I take a look at depictions of biblically accurate angels. I didn't totally know what people meant when they were suggesting that, but I did finally look into it, and they're a little bit freaky looking. They got like tons of different wings and just eyes all over the place, and usually like a big eye and some weird rings floating around them. And I might use that if I do end up doing an angels kind of counterpart series to this series. But taking a bit of inspiration with the multiple wings for this demon, I feel like that really worked out. Hope you all like it, and let's take a look at the finished result.
Many find the cold to be unpleasant. Depictions of comfortable people often show them under blankets with a hot drink or out on a sunny beach. Either way, somehow keeping their bodies warm. But, well beyond a mild dislike of lower temperatures, there are some who have a relentless fear of the cold, and they are who the ice demon Cryoarot seeks for its meals. This fiend resembles a polar bear, though one with four glowing eyes, a long icy tail, and many parts of its body replaced with jutting ice. No matter how hot the temperature around it, this beast's frozen limbs will not melt in the slightest. This is an essential trait for the demon, as it often hunts prey in warm climates. Those who live in cold regions are less likely to fear the cold, as they've been around it all their lives, so Cryoarot will often do its hunting in some of the hottest places on Earth. When it sniffs out a victim, this creature will not hold back, taking an initially subtle approach as many other demons do. It will openly charge at its victim and snatch one of their limbs in its icy maw, then drag them off to an isolated location sometimes a forest or plain or even a desert if one is nearby. As it drags them off, the unbreakable icicles making up its lower jaw will be seeping a frigid venom into the veins of its victim. This will make it impossible for the being's body to get warm, no matter how hot the air around them, but it will also keep them just warm enough to not die from the cold. After what could be an hour of being dragged off by this creature, it will toss them to the ground and run around them with its thundering icy feet in a wide ring, creating a frozen wall nearly 20 feet high. It will be a jagged structure with many jutting icicles sticking out. Then, the creature will leave. It will wait on the outside of this wall as its victim stews in terror and confusion at what is going on. Eventually, as they grow colder and colder, they'll realize that, even with a possibly mangled limb, they have to try and escape. As if that were a real possibility. They'll go to the icy wall and realize climbing out is possible, but to do so, they of course will have to grip onto the jagged icy structure with all their might. Some will simply give up there and then. But the prey Cryoarot yearns for most are the ones who try for the climb. Some will build slight stores of hope that as they pull their way up the wall higher and higher they may escape. But it is unimaginably sweet for this demon to stomp that hope back into terror as their prey reaches the top of the wall and it lashes its frigid tail at them from the other side, knocking them back down to the ground in the icy prison. Some may try again but many will not. Regardless, they'll spend upwards of a week growing hungrier and more tired, and more importantly growing colder and colder and more terrified, until finally the demon breaks through its own walls and begins its feast. This is one of my favorite things I've drawn in a while. I really like how this one turned out. I've had the idea for this demon for ages. I think I might have even mentioned a cryophobia demon in one of the earlier episodes. Also, by the way, the reason I'm not doing water here, which, you know, for an Elements episode, water is kind of more fitting, but I've already done a Fear of Water in the second Phobias as Demons episode. So I was like, ah, let's go with ice. And the main inspiration I was taking for this is from a frost demon that was drawn by Trent Kenayuga, who has a YouTube channel and actually drew the design that I was referencing on his YouTube channel. And this, anytime I've drawn an ice creature, basically, I've been referencing this drawing by him. I just think it's one of the coolest creature designs I've ever seen. I'll link the video where he drew it in the cards in the description. And I really wanted to try to design an icy creature that I personally like as much as I like that drawing of his. And I... I think I might have gotten there with this one. I really like how this guy turned out. And of course, I hope you all like it as well. Let's take a look. While demons are ruthless and horrific hunters, it is not impossible to escape them. In fact, the main tactic to do so, at a mention, sounds simple. You must overcome your fear of them. If you do this, they will lose interest and likely leave you be, but of course a solution being simple doesn't make it easy. 
Even still, I know of a tale in which someone who had a lifelong, unusual fear of rocks managed to overcome their fear even in the midst of an attack from the stone demon, Petreomp. This demon appears as a set of massive boulders covered in moss and vines and glowing green eyes that, when closed with it staying completely still, makes it appear like a natural part of its terrain. It's a massive and menacing demon, but proven not inescapable. As a boy, Aaron had been relentlessly bullied, and for some time those who tormented him would pelt him with rocks every day on his way home from school. Even after his family moved and his external circumstances became better, his pain from this experience manifested itself into a fear of rocks that plagued him into his adult life. He tried to always stay in cities, far from nature and away from anywhere he may come across many stones. But one day he was invited by co-workers to go out, camping. He'd been hoping to become better friends with those he worked with, and after much research into the area they'd be going, he saw that it was a flat, very forested area, with no mountains nearby and likely no more rocks than the pebbles he'd see lining the sidewalk in the city. He agreed to go, and as he left the city, Petreomp caught his scent. A few days into the trip, everything was going well, though waves of anxiety had surged through Aaron at a few different points. One night, Aaron wandered away from his tent to go to the washroom, and while all the others were asleep, Petreomp saw its opportunity to strike. With astounding silence for a creature of its size, it marched its way between him and his campsite, sitting itself down like a barrier before he turned. When he finally did, he saw the stone structure and his heart started to pound. He hoped he was dreaming and tried to avert his gaze and simply walk around it, but before he could, it opened one glowing eye. The light emanating from it drew Aaron's confused and horrified gaze, and terror swelled in him as more and more of the eyes peeled open. Then, he just ran, back into the woods, unsure of where he was going but simply wanting to be anywhere else. The creature stomped on after him, letting his terror grow until it deemed him ready for the next level of torment. It sped up and stomped a stone foot into his path, then blocked every direction he tried to move with its massive rocky limbs. It bumped and battered him with each of its stony legs, looming its body above him, revealing its underside to be a luminous green maw of jagged geodes. Eventually, it dropped its body down over him, so he was completely encased inside the creature, surrounded by spiky rocks. His breathing was fast and shallow and tears welled in his eyes as the spikes around him ever so slowly started growing in towards him. He looked all around himself and realized this horrifying and baffling situation was likely now inescapable. And somehow that gave him a sense of calm. He didn't want to die, but if it seemed so certain that he would, in the very least he wanted to enjoy his final moments. He looked all around him at the glowing rocks and took in that while they were clearly about to be his end, they were also beautiful. These forms, these rocks, were part of the element he'd spent so much of his life fearing and avoiding, and yet there was so much wonder he could now see in them. With the spikes still drawing nearer and nearer, his breathing slowed as he focused on the beauty of this final sight, which didn't end up being so final. With his heart rate slowed and a baffling switch in perspective, Aaron became an unsuitable meal. The fear Petreomp craved had nearly vanished and soon it simply lifted off him and wandered away. Of course, nobody in his life believed Aaron about what had happened, and he hadn't really expected them to. But he knew it had been real, and that if he could overcome his fear in a moment like that, he could do the same long term. He spent a year doing exposure therapy, keeping small collections of rocks and geodes in his home, trying to appreciate the beauty in them as he had on that night. Eventually, he became confident enough to go out on rock-laden hikes, and started doing this every weekend. He became more and more comfortable with the minerals that had once terrified him, and now, ten years later, he is one of the world's most accomplished rock climbers. When he tells the tale of what happened to him to initiate the eradication of his fear, he now claims that it was a vivid dream he'd had. But 
Those of us who've worked for the Predator Coalition of Demon Hunters know that what actually occurred was a genuine, remarkable feat of bravery in the face of certain death. While previous fears may come across to some as silly, few would judge someone for being afraid of fire. It is the most blatantly destructive of the elements, and no more than a few licks of a flame against your skin could cause significant pain. Because of this, the demon Pyrelius has a much easier time finding its next victim than other demons discussed. Pyrelius's body is a shifting construct of molten rock, lava, and sputtering flames. It is one of the smallest demons, commonly appearing like a three-foot-tall imp. It can dampen its flames and harden the lava forms on it to easily hide inside the homes of its victims. There, it will start small flames around the house, starting with places where the flames could be easily explained as accidents. It will fray wires from lamps and ignite a carpet nearby, it will cast flames into an oven to torch food, or cause surges in stovetop burners. The creature can spend as much as a month slowly increasing the rate of its attacks, drinking in the ever-increasing terror of its fire-fearing victim. Some have gone so far as to move, or simply go stay with a friend while they have someone look into what may be going wrong with their home but the creature will simply follow them to wherever they go next, possibly letting the attack stop for a few days to give them a false sense of hope, before igniting another flame. Eventually, it will make the attacks harder for the victim to explain away. It will torch their blinds, or awaken them to a fire on the pillow next to them. It may even start a fire inside their refrigerator for an extra nudge of confusion. Once enough terror has bubbled within them, Pyrelius will begin its endgame. The demon will ignite all the outer walls of their home or residence. The victim may push through their fear enough to try dousing the flames with water, but fire started by Pyrelius will only go out when it so chooses. The flames will slowly creep inwards, burning through all the victim's belongings as it shrinks the area in which they can avoid being burned themselves. Near the end, the imp will simply be sitting on a piece of furniture nearby, staring in full view at the victim, drinking in the scent of smoke and terror until the flames finally reach and cook the demon's meal to its ideal temperature. Charred black. Now, I'm not sure why, but I knew that I wanted to do a kind of lean and small demon for this one. Maybe it's because I knew a bunch of the other demons in this would come across as being a bunch bigger, and for something to be scary, I don't think they really need to be big. I mean, I, if you think about the most terrifying comic book villain, it's probably the Joker. He's not really a big guy. For the design, I was actually kind of funny enough taking inspiration from the imps in Hell of a Boss, the main characters in Hell of a Boss, which I still have to do another Hell of a Boss episode at some time in the near future, but it's hard to follow the first one I did because Hell of a Boss Horror Story episode is one of my favorite episodes I've done on the channel. But anyway, so I was taking inspiration from those shaped kind of imps, and then also, you might be able to tell a bit from Ghost Rider, because I really like the flaming skull kind of look. But to make it not too much of a ripoff of him, I made the head not like a full humanoid kind of skull, made it a little bit more creature-like, and tried to make it so that the eyes were kind of made from flames and smoke. Overall, I think that ended up making this thing look really cool. I really like the proportions. Not my favorite drawing of the episode, but and actually, I think it actually has a bit of a Digimon kind of look. I don't know if there's a specific one I'm thinking of, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being weird, or let me know in the comments if you think this has a bit of a Digimon look to it. But anyway, I hope you all like it, and let's take a look at how it finished up. I'm definitely very glad I ended up doing this episode and it won the poll, but it was such a tight race between this and Disney princesses as demons that I think I might have to sometime soon break the no pop culture affiliation thing and do that Disney princess demons episode. That'll probably be the next thing in this series. 
But anyway, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more demon episodes, as I mentioned, I've got a whole series of them. Four phobias as demons episodes before this, and two dinosaurs as demons episodes. I'll link the whole playlist at the end. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from Tony Robbins, another of my favorite motivational speakers. He likes to say that where focus goes, energy flows. And where energy flows, whatever you're focusing on grows. So in other words, your life is controlled by what you focus on. So you need to make sure to focus on where you want to go and not on your fears or the bad places you might have been before. With the right focus, you can control if you're headed towards a good future. I hope that's helpful to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye.